Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's learning objective is in green and we are learning to explore randomness to understand theoretical and experimental probabilities. So I'm an underlying randomness, I'm an underlying theoretical, and I'm an underlying experimental. Those are the key words that we're going to want to focus on today. So the idea of randomness is connected to the idea that some things are just unpredictable and whilst you could give it a best guess or a good crack at trying to figure out what's going to happen, there's always a degree of variability that you'll never be able to account for. So that idea of unpredictability and variability that we can't account for. So those are the key ideas that relate to randomness. And what we're going to do there is we're just going to explore this idea with a comparison of theoretical probability. And we're going to be using coins um, to demonstrate this. So we've got theoretical probability. And that's what we would expect to occur in a perfect world. So I'm going to write perfect world down there. And then experimental prob probability. So experimental probability. And this is um, kind of a a real world and actual experiment um, and unfortunately these experiments are then impacted by that randomness that we chatted about above so actual experiment this is from the real world and it's impacted by that randomness that we talked about impacted by random And it's impacted by randomness and we're just going to go through an example so um, on the right hand side we've got four experiments that i did i uh, went onto a website random.org and i've asked it to flip 10 random coins and these are all the results um, so before we do that let's change pink color so let's consider the theoretical probability of these first so theoretical probability so in theory, if I flipped 10 coins, I'd probably expect 5 to be heads, and I'd expect 5 tails. Um, just makes sense because the probability of 0.5, which means half of each. And what I'd probably expect, I'd probably expect there to be a random distribution of heads and tails. I'd expect them to alternate pretty frequently between heads and tails like that. So that's what I would expect to happen. But let's actually have a look at some experiments. Did what would happen in the real world, did it actually look anything like what we expected based on our theoretical probability of 0.5? So let's have a look at the first one here. So experiment one. So we can have a look. We've got a heads, 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 tails, heads, tails, heads. Oops, sorry, I meant tails, tails and then heads. So we got, in that one there, we had seven heads and three tails. And if you have a look at that, that didn't resemble anything like heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. It had five heads in a row as well. So five heads in a row. So that was nothing like what we would predict um, based on our theoretical model. So let's have a look at the second one. So we've got heads, 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 tails, 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 heads, 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 heads. So again, um, it didn't switch back and forth between heads, tails, heads, tails. There's a group of heads, a group of tails, and then another group of heads. So again, we had seven heads and three tails. And they were all in groups. So that's quite interesting as well. So experiment three that I did, um, it went heads, heads, tails, 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 heads, tails, heads, tails, tails. So it was a bit more similar. It was switching back and forth between the tails and the heads a bit more. Um, and then how many heads? So there were one, two, three, four heads in total. And there were six tails in total. And in the last experiment, experiment four, let's have a look what we had. So we had tails, 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 
Hids, hids, tails, tails, hids, tails, hids. So again, there's a, a big run of tails in a row to start off with, and then it did switch back and forth between heads and tails. But it, four heads, and then six tails as well. And what this kind of shows us is the idea that in an experiment or in the real world, very rarely it actually matches up with what we'd expect. So none of those four experiments had five out of five, five heads, five tails. So none of them had that. So there's always a little bit of variation. None of them really switched between heads and tails that too, too frequently. Maybe experiment three switched between heads and tails. And that's what we'd expect. But experiment one, two, and three. So if you have a look, experiment four, sorry, there were three heads in a row or three tails. This one here was all groups, and then there was five tail or five heads at the beginning of the first one. So none of those are what we expected in terms of our groups. And I suppose that kind of leads us to the the big kind of so what of kind of randomness and experimental probability experimental probabilities and theoretical probabilities they very rarely match each other they're not equal to each other so when you do an experiment you would expect there to be clumps of heads clumps of tails you'd expect there to be a little bit of variation from five heads five tails and if say i did flip 10 coins and got heads tails heads tails heads tails heads tails heads tails um maybe i got you guys to do this in class I would actually probably think that you cheated and just made up your results and didn't even use any randomness to do this because that there is exactly theoretical. The probability of that happening is so, so small. And if you actually think about that, that's 1 and 2 to the power of 10 times 2. So the probability of you getting alternating between heads and tails, heads and tails. Um, so 0 0.5 to the power of 10 times 2. So the probability of that actually happening is 0 0.0019. Um, so less than 1%, one percent, one tenth of 1%. So that's how I know if you did that, you'd probably be lying and you would have made up your results. So guys, hopefully from this video, you are able to distinguish between kind of theoretical and experimental probability and how that idea of randomness has a really big impact when you actually deal with probabilities in the real world. And hopefully you understand that in the real world, the theoretical probability is just unlikely. It doesn't happen too much. Um, so you'd always expect that those imperfections from experiments and randomness to appear. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, now let's get into today's questions.